Hiya, Mike. Delighted to be chatting with you. Myself and a friend here, Steve Evans. Hi, Hi, Mike. Nice to be with you two guys. Yeah, nice to be with you too. So you're in Florida, aren't you? So uh, is it nice and sunny there today? A bit unlike <laughs> here where it's raining and miserable and wet. <laughs> well, we've just missed a hurricane. Oof, we had, wow. uh, came in last night, very late, a November hurricane, which is not usual for Florida. But we kind of skipped it. It went a bit higher up the coast, but it's only a mild one. Only about 70 mile an hour winds maximum. Only? Oh, my only, God. Only. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's I played golf in 70 mile an hour winds. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, we, oh. we start panicking here if you get winds of 35, 40 miles an hour. That's bad enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> my, my, wow. Mike, that's not a Florida accent we can hear. There's a Manchester overtones there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely a Manchester lad. Will be on my way. Nice one. And... Uh, well, obviously, you've got a massive following on, on social media, quarter of a million followers. That That is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm assuming it's because you're a prolific author, poet, international talk show host, philosopher. So, but you, would you class yourself as an influencer because of those numbers? An influencer, sorry. Well, you could say I'm an influence, and it does help people. I, I came over to the States... Um, let me see, in 92, full time, uh, I was 46 years of age. And I had, I had a textile company in Manchester, um, curtain fabrics and upholstery. And I started at 19 on the street markets with 100 quid. And I just got married. So nobody helped me along the way. But something was helping me along the way, and I didn't know what it was. So time I retired, I was I, I wasn't really going to retire. I just came over to the States previously, before I came over here, for a few uh, years, for a few months, just to check it out. And I just followed a route, and an opportunity came along, and I followed it. And after six years of being here, I just started waking up one morning, scribbling ideas down that I assimilated over those six years, asking these questions. Why me? Why did I come from nothing, came from a house with no running got water, an outside toilet, corner terrace house, and came to where I was now. How did I get here? So as I was scribbling all this stuff down, it started to make a book. I mean, 10 days I'd written my first book. So oh, that's how the first wow. came along. <laughs> that's, that's quick. That's immense speed. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, very quick. Very quick. Yeah, go on. Well, there were six years of research before. You know, sitting out on the balcony, looking up to the heavens and asking loads of questions. I never read any books. I've never been a book reader. I left school at 16. So education didn't do it for me. And my intellect didn't do it for me. But there's something else that was going on. And it goes on in everybody's life. Everybody's got it. The thing is this. Everybody's born with a genius. Everybody. Now... A lot of people deny it, say, I can't do this or I can't do that. Well, if you open your mind up to the infinite possibilities of what you are, you're a universe onto yourself. Every little cell in your body, and you've got billions of them, and trillions of atoms, are working overtime to keep you alive. And there's got to be a truth attached to all that that lives within you. The only place where we our discrepancy is in our brain where we've got this ego and this intellect that interferes with the intelligence, the wisdom, and the truth of how the rest of our body's working. Was there, was there right. a single was there a single moment, a single yeah. thought that was like a turning point that from this moment, the six years? Yeah, well, it was the moment. Actually, the moment was when I was born. And I came out and I got a smack on the bum. And <laughs> I, I cried. And I thought, well, no one's going to take the smile from my face ever again. So all the time I was living in Manchester, I was always called stupid. And I'm, as a writer now, by intellectual people, I'm still called stupid. And the thing is this, I agree with them 100%. I am 100% stupid. Oh. But so is everybody else on the planet. Oh. <laughs> all the people got... Can't accept it yet. But once you accept the stupidity <laughs> that we do, then we can start to make amends for that and not jump in with both feet. 
when we've got a decision to make in life. Because we've all got different decisions that we come across. And if this philosophy, philosophy didn't work for me for being a kid, I wouldn't have put a word of it down. It's got to work every moment that you're alive. Well, that's a different way of looking at it. It's quite yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Now, you've got a, also got an excellent website out there, haven't you? And you list uh, characteristics on it. I think they all begin with eyes. Is it like inhale, in, in, intuition, instinct? Can you explain a little bit about those concepts? Concepts? Yeah. Well, like I said, they all begin within. So the inner part of our, our intuition, we're being tutored all the time. So if you, this morning Steve's got a sore throat. So he's being tutored by his body, telling him he's got a sore throat. That's from the intuition of within you. So we've got signals all the time. If we go out for a meal, you're going to go out for a meal today, it's your anniversary, and you overeat. When you come home, what are you going to do? Get the digestion tablets out because your body sold you something, right? So you, we keep doing it. We keep doing this stuff. And our body keeps saying, hey, mate, what are you doing to me? <laughs> You're doing me in. And eventually it turns into a disease. And we are at disease. So like you said just a minute ago, it's different, the philosophy. And it's different in the fact that we're all living a mirror image of how it really is meant to be. You've not come onto earth to suffer. You've come here to have a good laugh, a nice time on earth, and enjoy every moment that we're given. I mean, it's only a brief moment anyway. If you live to be 100, it goes in a click like that. You know, I make 77 already, and I still feel like a six-year-old kid. <laughs> I can still remember myself as a six-year-old kid, and I'll never be any different than a six-year-old kid. So all these intellectual professors that I've talked to and a lot of other people, some cotton on to it, and others don't like it one little bit. They think it's a load of bunkum, and they'll, those that think it's a load of bunkum, I agree with them too. For them, it's a load of bunkum. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite a simplistic way of looking at it in a way, when you put it like that. Um, it's quite ingenious almost, isn't it, I suppose? And I've just realised that Terry's got all the N words written bit down behind him there. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Written seventeen books, they've all got a well-being theme. Which of these are you most proud of, or, or another way? Which has been the most successful? Well, if we all have, you know, if you have children, you can't say which is your favourite. True. Child. True. All your babies. But, <laughs> but the fact is, the latest ones that I'd recommend one for you if you if you want to keep your health. It's called Well, Well, Well. Eat yeah. well, think well, live well. That was the latest so, book, wasn't it? 2015, and, was that? 2015? Yeah. Was that the last yeah. one? Yeah. Well, there's another one out there, but I'm not even putting it on my website. It's oh. called Get Real. Oh, that, oh, that's real. But um, I'm letting people find them now if they want to. I've never advertised, by the way. I've never mm. used PR ever. So I, I've got, I made that vow. Before I put one word down, I thought, I'm not going to convince anybody today that they need to read any of my books. If they want to, they can. If they don't want to, all well and good. Because it's not a subject that most people are comfortable with because the books challenge the reader to challenge themselves and go on this journey, a lifetime journey of self-discovery. But all the time, we have these thoughts in our head, whether it's to do with religion or whether it's to do with politics or all the other stuff that's going on. And it's interfering with the truth, the wisdom, and the intelligence that wants to come in and take over our lives. And what this intelligence does, it then gets hold of the intellect and the ego, and it says, now you've been on the driving seat for so long, go and take a seat on the back. Sit on the back and let me guide you as a driver and let me drive you through the rest of your life in a joyful state of being. Now, most people can't come up with that idea. You know, they say it's impossible. How can you be joyful when there's a war going on, when you're feeling sick or you're feeling ill, when someone, a loved one's dying? How can you live in joy when all that stuff's going on and all the other stuff that's piled up on top of us? Well, again, it's simple. If you're going into a hospital and you say one of your parents is dying, do you want to go in and go in with a miserable face and make it worse for them 
and they look at the worry on your face because you would be concerned. Or do you want to go in with a joyful state of being, try and lift their spirits? And that, believe it or not, maybe help them recover because joy is healing. When our the neurons of the brain light up, sends messages to our central nervous system and into our, uh, our immune system, and it keeps us healthy. But when we're worried and miserable, all our body tensions up, you get pains here and pains there. And then you're already in a state of stress. And that stress stresses all the cells of your body out. And those cells start squeezing into each other. And there's other armies inside us of viruses and different bacteria that start to take over because the good guys have been weak. They've been weakened by the way we're thinking. And maybe by diet and by lack of exercise too. But diet and lack of exercise is only a very small portion of it. You can eat an unhealthy diet all your life, basically, if you only eat small portions of it. If you only have little bits and tastes. Always remember, the first taste is the banquet. When you taste something, that's your taste. You don't have to go through a whole big plate of it. You've tasted something, if it's a dessert, taste it, enjoy it a little bit, and then slowly start to change your taste buds for other desserts or other foods that are even more tasty, that are healthier, and your body will appreciate it more. So as you age, you don't get sick. Yeah, sure, we're all gonna age and we're all gonna die. But the fact is, you won't die of a disease. So far, so good for me. People say, how do you know it's gonna to happen for you in the next 30 years of your life when you get to 100, 105? I don't, but I plan to be here for 110 years. And if it doesn't, well, if it works out fine, <laughs> if I'm wrong, so what? I won't know about it. Yeah. But as long as you put, but a lot of people don't think that way. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, when I see my daughter married or my grandchildren married, I'm happy to go. Well, that's what they do. They go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, philosophy, yeah, yeah, works. You want to live 210. That's the right way to go about it, isn't it? You're thinking positively. Yeah. That's 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 part and parcel of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody or the writer we've spoken to has said what you've said, that you, you don't go out your way to promote or publicise. No, no one's ever said that, have they, Steve, I think. No, no, nobody's ever mentioned that. They've gone no. out the way to do a lot of yeah. social media work yeah. and a lot of publicity. You're the first one I've heard to say that. Do that. And oh. in fact, last night I was at a book launch and they were saying how important it is to promote your book and you're better with a publisher because they can do this and that for you. And you're saying completely the opposite. Yeah. But if it worked for you... yeah. Well, the thing is, the other two books I recommend is Cutting Truths, C-U-T-T-I-N-G, Cutting Truths, and The Joys of Live Alchemy. I will start with The Joys of Live Alchemy. That would be the first one to start with. There's about 50 essays in each book of those two. The, the third one, well, 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 my wife wrote the first um, part of that, the food part, and that's got a Probably it could fill 500 pages on a regular book, but there's only 81 pages on it, and it's bullet points of good foods and bad foods. When it comes to positivity and negativity, both are imposters. Treat the, the if somebody praises me or somebody insults me, it's the same imposter because there is no insult and there is no praise. Everything is how it is, and everybody's got their opinions of what they see how it should be. So. That's their opinions, and it's none of my business what they're thinking. I can only send them love. I can send them joy. And those are only the two powerful essences that describe who I am and describe everybody else who I'm speaking to. When I see you, Steve, and, and see you, Terry, I see both of you as love and joy. And joy means just obey yourself. The true self that exists outside the ego and intellect's hold. The true self that's eternal is infinite and was around before you were born because it contains two things. It contains energy and intelligence. And you, we can't make a move without intelligence or any energy. When our energy goes, we go. So where does that energy go? Energy can never disappear. It's got to go somewhere. So when you... And it's got no thought attached to it. So don't think you've been reincarnated with all these thoughts. Those disappear. But while we're actually talking and thinking about it, that energy goes throughout the whole of the universe. You can't miss it. So all the thoughts that come into our brain 
are floating all over the world. Now, if you're religious, you say, oh, God reads all our thoughts and stuff like that. That's what religions handle it, thinks of it. And parts of religion is very, very good. But when it comes to the hell and damnation bits and all that kind of stuff, well, that's just man-made fear mongering. And none of that is true. That's just man-made fear mongering that's written by some people that wanted to take power. And unfortunately, power and money has gone into religion and politics, especially here in America. So it's taken over the real truth of what it needs to help people with. But it does help a lot of people. And, you know, it, but it's a Band-Aid rather than looking at the real truth. And my books take the Band-Aid off and they show what's raw inside and what needs to be, no one say cured, because you can never get rid of the thoughts. You're never going to lose your personality. It doesn't change who you are. I've never changed from being a kid. Only the words that come out of the mouth are slightly different. But when I was in the warehouse and I was selling to people, it was a total different ball game, but same as. It was different words coming out, but I always used to have a laughing joke with them when they came in. I never really bothered with them trying to sell them anything, really. But the secret was buying the right stuff, giving them value, getting the good quality closeouts from the mills and places. And I was selling stuff a lot of times cheaper than it could be manufactured because my buying was good. So when you buy stuff, I wasn't buying, I wasn't putting orders down, but I was jobbing basically. I was buying clothes outs and clothes outs. And all those people that tried to put me out of business, most of them went bankrupt because they were stuck into the recession. And mm -hmm. um, when they left the mills with all the fabrics and the reneged on the deals, they always came to me. So I built up an honest reputation that they know they could deal with me and I paid them immediately. I never went into debt. I've never been in debt for one second in my life, apart from a few mortgages I had when I was a youngster. So there's certain things that I was doing along the route hmm. that I look back on and I try to think, well, why was I doing this? Why was I doing that? And while I was thinking about all those things, it expanded into a deeper consequence of looking at it on the health issues, on the finance issues, to keeping ourselves in a decent state of finance throughout our lives, maintaining our finance, earning enough to keep ourselves comfortable without being greedy, and also mainly keep ourselves in a healthy state of being. Keep yourself in a nice, pure body. When it goes, it goes in a purer state. And with a purer body and a purer mind, life is divine. You're in the Garden of Eden, in paradise. And that's what you, that's one of the passages in the Bible that I would kind of pick on, because what happened to Adam and Eve? I don't mean be a fairy story or whatever, yeah. but they were in paradise. Yeah. Um, the snake comes along, which is ego, <laughs> and it are, and it says, go and eat the fruit from that tree. And what tree was it? Tree of knowledge. <laughs> so once you bite into knowledge, you disconnect yourself from your maker because you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to gain your knowledge and then allow your maker, whoever you deem that to be, or the energy, to guide you through the rest of your life. And as you're guiding through your life and the problem comes along, you sit back, you get into silent mind and start to say to yourself, well, what's the best issue we can do here? Ask this question or that question and different ideas and formulate the different ideas, then go down the one that seems to be the simplest, the simplest, the easiest to do and without complicating things. And you'll find your decision-making works far better. I've invested in the stock market since I was 19, and I've never been once caught out in a crash. I've been out of all the crashes well before. So uh, it works in every single facet, like I say, with your health, with your finances, yeah. whatever it is. Oh. Well, yeah, it's a completely different lookout, isn't it? It is. Uh, I don't think I've heard anybody talk, talk like that before. That's amazing. Yeah. Mike, well, uh, Still a Manchester lad, so uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, there's nothing different about me than is with you with Stephen Terry. True. We're all yeah. the same, yeah. But it's just that we've been accustomed to listening to stuff that over centuries, for thousands of years, we've been squeezed and squeezed and squeezed into a dungeon, and this dungeon comes into the world free and very quickly through the parents, through schooling, through all the different ideas, 
get squeezed more and more. So when you're feeling stress, that's a sign that we're in this dungeon, showing us we're locked in a dungeon. We shouldn't be feeling stress ever. Now, is there dangers out there? Sure, there's dangers. But in the animal kingdom, if an animal had fear, then it would freeze. If an antelope saw a lion and it froze, it would be eaten. But what does it do? It has caution. It knows danger and it sees the danger, so it runs away. It flies. It runs. So it's a fight, flight mentality. Hmm. So sometimes you've got to fight. You're in a corner. You've got no choice. You're stuck. Someone's going to try and beat you up. So you've got to try and fight as best you can. But enjoy the fight as much as you can. And if they kill you, so what? You you, you enjoy that too. <laughs> whenever you go, enjoy whenever you go. Because you didn't have a choice when you're coming in. you got to smack on the bum. And you have to cry. So fool them this time. Yeah. Fool the bullies. Yeah. Smile and go out smiling. <laughs> uh, good, moving on then. I was uh, <laughs> going to ask, um, well, I was going to talk about you if you've ever thought about doing any creative writing, oh, but you're very yeah. creative in your mind yeah. anyway. Uh, have you thought about any other novels or screenplays or anything like that? Or have you well, done that as well? Well, I did start a couple of novels, but what I found is whatever I do, it's got to be authentic and it's got to work. And when you're doing a novel, you've got to live each character that you're going to be writing down. So you've got to be that character while you're writing it down. And if I'm going to start to do that, then it means I'm detaching and becoming what you call normal again. And I've never been accused to be normal. <laughs> I've always been natural. <laughs> so uh, I've tried it and I sensed what my body was tightening up while I was writing. I've written a couple of pages about one about a guy that goes into a uh, a cafe and uh, no woman comes and sits next to him and it's he, she's uh, got a little ring she's going to put on his finger saying I'm going to give you this and it's a very crowded cafe and uh, he puts the ring on and he just closes his eye for a second and she disappears and he just asks this proprietor where was that woman going was here he said no one's ever been here he said well where's this ring come from I think and that was how the beginning of it was going to be and it's going to be expanded <laughs> into a good novel. I think it would have been a good one. But yeah. if somebody comes there and approaches me to do a movie, then I'll give them the story mm. and they can expand that into a screen script. So no one's approached me yet, but mm. everything in its moment. You see, the books themselves will speak for themselves mm. and they'll take off. They'll take off in their own given moment. Now... You say about creativity. Well, I'm also a poet, so I always like to write, read some kind of a poem. This one kind of it um, it gives light to what I've been talking about about us living a mirror image in, in what we are here. It's called Mystical Smoke. The architect <laughs> had it all planned. He built us a home. Some call it Cuckoo Land. Its existence is denied by many. They give it not a thought, not even for a penny. Worries and woes, just look at the inflation. No time to spare in the figment of the imagination. A lost childhood. Oh, too soon did it go, floating away, somewhere over the rainbow. From the fruits of life remains only peel. Because folks told us, get real. <laughs> Thief calls time, even on stainless steel. In Never Never Land, infinity has a great feel. Life shifts and boats now blow in the wind. Saints disappear along with the sin. Whispers of sweet nothings vanish in mystical smoke. Awaken from the dream was everything only ego's joke. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. Enjoyed that. Well, yeah. th that's from a book I wrote in 2001 called Worry Causes Wrinkles. <laughs> and I re published it in 2010. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. And that's just, a, there's, I think there's three essays in that book and yeah. 250 poems. Okay. Can I ask you about those two images behind you, Mike? 
Are they yeah. images of infinity, consciousness, the universe? Yeah, they are the universe with the, what you see in it, and it's meant to be all that. And my wife did those. That was my oh. wife. She's an artist. She oh. sews. Yeah. Got this is back of here is a sewing room. So uh, we only see that sort of thing behind there's a sewing machine. So uh, oh, yeah. she does a lot of her own sewing and stuff. Not one of the old uh, singer she's... machines, the singer sewing machines, the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> She did have one of those. She's yeah. been sewing all her life, so she just loves to create. And the only thing we miss here, we're in a condo, so she miss, misses the gardening because ah. she's a great gardener. She had green fingers and uh, always had a fantastic, uh, beautiful garden wherever we were. So we might come back to England yet. Yeah? don't know. Um, it's plan B because I don't have any health insurance here. Oh, I never played oh, this oh, oh, oh. No. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Such so wood, yeah. Very consistent. The insurance is keeping myself healthy, keeping Margaret healthy. Yeah. So that's our insurance. And if it fails, then this plan B, because I paid into the British system all my life for 46 yeah. years I was, I, well, when I was working. Mm. So I paid international insurance. Mm. And um, but here, when we came here, we I'm not really, I can't say I've worked here. I've written 17 books, as mm. you say, <laughs> but um, I don't do it for what you call a living. Uh, if anybody, Asked me to do a, a, a talk for them, and I'll do the talk, and it'll go to charity. What well, is earned, and if I sold millions of books, most of that would go to charity too. So it's not a, an issue of me doing something and trying to gain anything from it, because I got that from my businesses. I was able to do things far better than I knew how. I didn't know how to run a business. That's like I said, I was married at nineteen. And I had two kids, which I was 21. And at 19, I just got on the street markets. And everybody's trying to push me into the gutter even further. The, the market superintendents, I went, and I, could, I won't mention the market, but it's not yeah. far from them. And um, he wanted a kickback. He wanted one yeah. for me to do a store. I didn't even know what that was. And if I did, I wouldn't <laughs> give it to him. So I went down the street a little bit, put a sheet on the floor, and I worked off the payment. So I didn't have to pay a store rent. I only had remnants. I worked with just cloth remnants. I slowly built that up. Like I said, I never went into debt. I slowly built that up and I bought rolls of cloth and then went into the wholesale side of it. So, But something was leading me the whole way. Because like I said, I knew I was stupid because so many people told me I was. <laughs> and I couldn't deny it because I did stupid. I still do stupid stuff myself. Now, you know, we all do stupid stuff. We recognize the stupid stuff we do, but we don't think what is stupid. We don't think anxiety is stupid. We don't think stress is stupid. So what do people do? They run to a psychiatrist or a psychologist mm. and they start to find what the issues are. I mean, I interviewed somebody this last Saturday. She's very good, a very good psychiatrist. I got that uh, somewhere on Twitter page and it was a good half an hour interview again. But, and the thing is, we led her along a path to destructive consciousness meditation destructive meditation constructive meditation and destructive meditation and that's where i wanted her to get her to because she gives a warning in her book yeah. saying that this is needs to be guided by professional like gurus or people like that mm. well you don't need the gurus to do it but that's the point i wanted to make if a psychiatrist has already gone to the stage and she really is a holistic more than anything, but she doesn't call herself that. If she, she, but she's put this in a book which contains 300 pages all about psychiatry, medications and different symptoms and stuff like that. But the actual fact is we met. See, there's synchronicity. And there's another guy called James uh, um, John Leaf who's written a book called The Secret Language of Cells. And it's an amazing book about our love cells, how they communicate with each other. But again, what I've written about is exactly the same what he's written about. Yeah. Now, he's a scientist, mm. and he can't use the word wisdom or intelligence in his book because it's not scientific. There's no scientific analogy of wisdom or intelligence. So he doesn't mention those words. Mm. But mine is more metaphysical. Mm. But the message is the same. Mm. You see, when you get authentic people, they do it from a scientific point of view, which I haven't studied. But when I've spoke to all these people, we're on the same page and we come together. And I've had long discussions with certain professors who have studied all their life, microbiologists and people like that. And the synchronicity cannot be denied. 
But they don't do that because their curriculum in the universities that gets flung out of the mention what I'm told. It's about. repeated learning, isn't it? Learning from repeating what others have told you to, to learn. Exactly. And you've got the genius inside you to keep spreading that out and you becoming, first of all, tutoring yourself and allowing yourself the grace to be able to go into those zones. And you'll find you remarkably how over time it all changes. It changes your diet. It changes your health. Changes whatever's going on within you into what it needs to be. Now, one of the foods that people should give up from childhood onwards, and even in childhood, they've got to be very careful with it, is dairy products. Dairy is toxic food. Even if you get a grass fed meat, it's okay occasionally. Grass fed meat has got certain enzymes in it which are good. But what dairy will do, it will give you mucus. When the cold weather comes, it's already allowing your body without mucus to lower its immunity system so you catch cold easier without. And now when you give it up, your body's stronger. And when the colder weather comes in and the chills, your body can sustain that more because your immune system has grown stronger. It's no longer susceptible to what dairy is doing for you. There's lots of books been written about it, about milk, and especially the dairy that you get today which is full of hormones and antibiotics true, and other, true. other garbage that they suck into the cows. Yeah. So they're not even what they used to be. Mm. Because, again, it's profit, it's greed. It's what people want to fatten the cows with. Mm. And even some of the grass-fed, for the last three months, they feed them back on corn. But what's the point? And especially if the corn's uh, genetically modified, yeah. then you're giving all of the garbage into the animal. And a lot of the times in America, they all live in barns, they squash together. What kind of life is that for an animal mm. and you're going to eat that kind of stuff so it's much better fish is not so bad fish is reasonable mm. um i'm not and nothing's written in stone though you can have whatever you want in smaller portions yeah. but the more you move over to a regular kind of proper diet for your body mm. the better it's going to be for that so that proves it itself your wealth increases when it proves itself with your investments as you age because you need enough to be able to sustain it, shelter and food throughout your life. And the joy of the moment and the love of that joy, if you love and joy are married together, the partners, and that two elements of us is our description of who we are. They're not emotions that they show you in the, in the dictionary. You can put feelings on them, if you will, because you feel them. It's again, going back to the insights, the information, the inner. Now, when we talk about the inner too, we've got to understand this inner is the whole of the universe. So we'll call it inner, but it's everything that you see at night in the whole of the universe. Yeah. And that's infinite. Well, it goes on forever. Whatever's out there is in here because we were stardust. That's where we've come from. Every molecule, every cell in a tree, it's only 10% difference in the molecules of the tree than the human being, molecule-wise. So all these molecules are put together, and they're put together in certain different ways. Ants have got a different structure than we have. So we've all got different structures, but it's all life forces, and they all contain intelligence. When you look at an ant and see what an ant's doing, uh, it's amazing. The bees, the amazing intelligence that they've got. When you see the birds flying 3,000 miles to migrate and come back, and the salmon swim 3,000 miles in the ocean, where's the compass? Who's to, they go back to the breeding ground and they know exactly where they're going. Mm. That's true intelligence. Yeah. And we look at that going, huh, huh, what are you worried about? Is there inflation going on? Is this going on? Who cares about this? But Mike, yeah. it, it's been an absolute delight chatting with you. It's been very, very interesting. I very really informative. Like this philosophy. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your time you've given to interview me. You're both two good guys. You're doing great work for people and for the authors that come along. Keep doing what you're doing. And all the time, you listen, you're talking to people, you're helping them out. And at the same time, you're learning new experiences. So it's good for you and it's good for them. And it's a good thing for you to do. And you never know where it's going to take you. It's true, yeah. True. That's it. Very brilliant. True. Yeah. Excellent. Great for nice. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Pleasure.